Hello there. Welcome to the Anderton's Television Pro Audio Shootout, dispelling myths from Pro Audio products. We test them out so you don't have to. Mmm. Hi there guys, welcome to Anderton's TV. Hello. I'm Brad. I'm Rob. It's the first time we've done a video together. It's a very special day. Really special. How long have we worked together? I think too long. Too, too long. But too many, long. many times, many years. And it's, it's been a long time coming because always clashing. We're, we're never allowed in these no. videos together. P probably good reason for probably. that. Probably. But what we're going to do today is we're going to start a series of um, looking at high-tech gear that you can't necessarily show properly in these videos. Um, PA speakers. Yeah, monitors, anything in that sort of thing, which doesn't so, make a huge... Well, it, it does make a sound, but it's more about how you perceive it on the video. It yeah, doesn't really it's work. It's very, very difficult to get these things across in the actual video, yeah. you know, using microphones. You can't really get the vibe for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we're going to listen to a load of stuff, um, we're going to rate it, we're going to use a rating system. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about a few categories. Yep. So we're going to talk about uh, portability, ease of use, functionality, functionality, volume. volume. Uh, what was the last one? Portability. I think it was portability. Yes, it was. Portability. So we're going to be talking about those five things, and we're going to give each section a rating out of five. It's not really. There's winners. There's losers. It's more no, about. It's, it's more about our opinion. It's not yeah. really anyone loses. And that's the important thing. This is what we thought about it. Um, we do invite everyone to come in store and have a listen to these products um, because that makes a massive, massive difference yeah. to you. Um, and you know, lifting these things up because we've obviously gone through. We've. Yeah, we tried to lift some things up. <laughs> it's quite not nice. feeling so strong. No, um, but if there's anything that you see um, or you think that would be good for us to to review in this format, let us know. Whether it be audio interfaces, um, studio speakers, anything yeah. like that, we can put it through its paces and give you guys a score. Fortunately, the formula works, so we can do anything, even yeah. the mixers as well as you mixers. Said. Be yeah, really mixers. Mixers. Should we get into it? Let's go. Ooh. So we've got all the systems, Mark Audio Ergo 4, RCF Evox 8, and the LD500 Curve, which is lovely. Weighs a bloody ton though. Look at it. Oh, <laughs> we'll cover that in a yeah. sec anyway. So, on our board, our whiteboard of dreams, we have the three systems and what we're going to rate them out of. So we've got portability, ease of use, sound quality, volume, and functionality, and then we'll give you a total for each three. But like I said, there's no winners or losers. No. It's just a rough, rough idea of what we're actually doing here today. Um, so, should we right. start with portability? Is it yeah. at the top? So, Mark Ergo, yes. out of the lot, yes, probably the the lightest, I think. Uh, it's definitely the lightest. Yeah. But in terms it's... of the actual build of it, you can see this is just the, a couple of those, which are all separate, so you can break them up. So those are actually plastic, but the, on all three of these, the base units are wooden. So obviously that will help with the audio quality of the base, the low end response, um, but it does obviously compromise the weight, which is yeah. something to take into consideration if you're using this for small band work or if you're a solo artist going out with a small mixer. Weight is a factor. Um, mm. All three of them, as we say, are wooden. Yep, so obviously with the RCF Evox, mm. getting slightly bigger, if I just scooch over. A little scooch. You can see that the cabinet is bigger than this one here. Obviously, this is... <laughs> it's, <laughs> just, it's there. That's in a front <laughs> Take that again. So, um, but obviously the bigger the cabinet, as you said, you're getting yeah. a little bit more for it. Now, the bass response on this bad boy was absolutely killer. Yeah. But the size of it is huge. It's like double the size of most of them, obviously just a little bit lower. Um, but the bass response is massive. So, yeah. But then again, we were talking about this when we were playing them. It's If you had a, like an 18 or 15 inch sub. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the same sort of size. It's going to be the same sort of, yeah. well, it's going to be the same sort of weight. Well, weight, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but we, I think we sometimes forget because we're judging these against two others which are much smaller. Yeah. We sort of go, oh, it's really heavy. But um, I think, with in terms of rating, get the pen, Rob. Get the pen. Got the pen. So we said, Mark Ergo. We gave that a four out of five. A four. Give it a Obviously, four. five being really good, one being really low. Yeah. So we gave Evox. that a four because it was. Um, although it is the lightest out of the three, it's the smallest, most compact. It's still quite weighty. So yeah. you've got to bear that in mind. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're all 
relatively weighty, obviously. The one you yep. sat on is, is the biggest. But I think you're right. Four was a good score for that. Yes. We gave the RCF Evox 8 a three out of five. Again, it's not massively heavy. It's... It is quite awkward. I think the other thing we haven't really discussed is what you do with these when they're off. Yeah. So you take the poles off, you take the um, the speakers off, and obviously you've got to carry them around separately. To be fair, out of the three, this is the only one that has a compartment on the back, which means mm. it does go as a flush little box. But see, that's that's that know. also makes it heavier though, because yeah. these top bits are actually wooden, so you're just doubling up on the weight there. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, that's probably why we gave that one a three. Now the LD curve, it has to be a one. Yeah, it it's is isn't to easy one. to lift. Uh, it's got to be a one. So that's that's where we've gone with that. Um, all of this, we're going to try and write it up and have it on the screen at the end, so somewhere you can over see. There, somewhere over there. Put it in the comments. The comments, yeah. In the comments or something. Yeah. yeah. Just in the it could be here <laughs> in the space. We don't know. Chris can work that out, can't yeah. Chris? Magic Chris. The Maltese Pigeon. <laughs> we love him. Anyway, uh, <laughs> ease of use. What do we get? I'm going to get my red notepad out because we made some notes. We made some notes. I feel like this is... This, do you remember this is your life? I don't... You're probably too young I'm for probably that. too young. It's showing my age now. It had the themes on. Ba, 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 ba. He came out with a red book and he told them everything about their life because they didn't know about it oh, and God, brought surprise so guests old. out. <laughs> That's what TV used to be like before Netflix. God, this is your life and chill doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're talking ease of use. Yeah. The uh, Ergo, beautiful to set up, mm -hmm. really simple, nice system. The, the top bits click into place, all the cables and everything's included. That was lovely, mm -hmm. we enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, and again, the poles included, so that just goes straight in. I suppose you could put that on a separate speaker stand if you yeah, wanted to, same for all of these. We've got the same cable from the back, so it's not gonna be a huge issue. So we gave that bad boy a five. Big old five. And again, we actually gave the RCF Evox a five because that was really easy yeah. to set up. Um, what's worth noting on both of these is they have jack and XLR input. Yeah. So if you are looking to uh, use multiple inputs, or you've got a mixer that's only got jack output rather than having to get separate cables and all that jazz. It's on there, which was quite useful. Yeah, absolutely. We enjoyed that. Um, the LD, I can't notes everywhere. Again, a five. That, yeah. was, that was beautifully easy to set up. And one thing that I love was, I don't know if Chris will be able to get this, is this whole system breaks into little compartments. Little chunks. Yeah, it's like audio Lego and uh, People that know me know that I love Legos, so... Enjoy the Legos. It's, well, it's kind of probably more like stickle bricks, and I bet you don't even remember those either. It's going way above me today. <laughs> How old are you? Old enough. Old enough, <laughs> but not for stickle bricks. Uh, <laughs> stickle bricks. Stickle bricks, yeah. Sound right. quality. This is where, it, for me, what this really comes down to. This is the big one. Because, obviously, portability, everything like that, that's good. You need to have something that defines a speaker system, and I think audio quality is definitely the um, definitely the thing for me. Yeah. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but with the Mark Ergo, um, I, I, I think we gave that a four, didn't we? We did, yeah. For, for the actual size of the cones, or, or the actual speakers up here, as mm. well as the quality it came out with, I was really impressed. But so. one thing that that has, which the others don't, is the uh, preset EQs. That's it, yeah. Obviously, on the back of here, you've got preset EQs, which means you can I guess tailor the sound a little bit more depending on what instruments or sound is going through it, which I thought was a really nice addition. Yeah. Then we got a four. We'll give that bad boy a four. Four. And then for the RCF Evox, there's a bit of a problem with this one for me. I don't know if you felt the same. A um, lot of low end, not a great yeah. balance between the yeah, low I think, and the high. I think you're right. It did, it did sound a bit woolly the low end. When you crank it to its absolute fullest, it is a bit more balanced, but for smaller venues, that's not really ideal. No, no, that's it. So I think we will give that one a three. A three? It should, it, I think if they put a balance between sub and top. Yeah, you could probably get away with it. Yeah, definitely. But I think three is fair. Three is a fair shout. Three. We will show you this board in a minute. Yeah. I'm not just writing on it for, for the fun <laughs> of it. I'm just drawing Brad. He's bit by a bit. Draw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> um, then on the um, the LD curve, that yes. bad boy got a five. Yeah, huge, huge difference. I think. Yeah, that was that was amazing. That was like uber next level. See, stuff. This is why it's so interesting, is because you've got 
all of these different factors which make them look good and bad, but not bad, well, this, just different. I think that's the important thing with these systems. Yeah. Everything's got its own unique um, unique areas where it excels over others. Mm. There's no right or wrong answer. There's not just one speaker that does everything super well. So. Volume. Vo volume. 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 Yeah. Volume. Uh, with volume. <laughs> volume Defoe. Vo volume Defoe. <laughs> with volume, we uh, mark Ergo. It's uber loud, but it's it's um, very easy to distort at the top end. Yeah, because obviously you've got your gain, you've got the preset on it, and you've got the master. Mm. So as soon as you start pushing the master and the gain, it clips, and it's really wanted to stop. Yeah. But I mean, if you're really going to push it, it's got the volume. Definitely got the volume. I just think with um, that distorting thing, um, and that was at its fullest. That yeah. That's worth noting that we were driving these to it was loud excess. Um, with that, I think we'll give it a three. Give it a three. Whoop. A three, lovely. It's like yeah. PA bingo. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, RCF Evox. Um, that was, that's got to be a five. Yeah. That, that thing was... That is extremely loud. It's good loud, not bad loud, but No, it was loud. good. Nice level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good like, balance. Like you said, we were really pushing it, so it was yeah. always getting to a point where it was uncomfortable, but that's... Yeah. That's the only way of testing it. Yeah, absolutely. The curvy boy. Curvy boy. <laughs> curvy boy. Well, I put mega loud. Should we do like a five plus plus? <laughs> I don't think we could do a five plus plus. We could definitely do a five. Five. Um, the tip. That that thing was just. That's definitely the one for me. And, and this is what I say: if you're using that with an acoustic drum kit, you wouldn't have any problem no. whatsoever. No. You think people are using even electric kits? Yeah. That, oh, well, electric kits, that's slightly different because obviously you can bring everything down well, to Well, you have more control. Um, yeah, yeah. With acoustic kits, you have to go up to a certain level, which is very, very difficult. <laughs> very difficult. It's not hiding from the book, Brad. No, no. <laughs> um, I like the book. I feel like this is your life. <laughs> if anyone remembers that, leave a comment. Um, then we go to... Uh, functionality. Functionality, which is a bit difficult with this because all of these are just conventional speakers that really only excel when used with a mixer. Yeah. There's, there's not a great deal going on there. The RCF, um, uh, sorry, the Mark Ergo, that's the one that um, I think really got, that got a five out of them for me. Yeah. Because of those preset EQs. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's the only one on these, these three which does offer that. Yeah, absolutely. The others are literally just plug in and go. Um, which is fine. That's yep. what you'd get with most speakers. Is that, you know, there's this whole trend with DSP processing, which you know we'll talk about in other videos. But um, for the most part, these are just speakers that you plug in and away you go. Which is great. <laughs> with the RCF Evox, um, simple setup, very conventional speaker as we've discussed. Yeah. Um, I think because of its lack of functionality, isn't really for solo artists. No. Pro it, it, these all three of them really are for bands, I would say. Definitely. Um, but I, I think we give that bad boy a three. Yeah. Yeah. Three. A three. Um, then we go on to our LD. See, this is where it kind of, for me, mm. wasn't great. No, because not only is it just a conventional speaker with a volume, mm. it doesn't have, it's only got one type of input, no, which is XR. That's it. That's it. I mean, if that works for you, great, but a lot of people want a little bit more flexibility on it. Yeah, definitely. So that's, um, that's all good and well. Um, should we tot up? Oh, what are we going to give that? We'll give that Quiet. a... Was it? A, I think we'll give it a three. Three? Yeah, because, uh, you know, in the context of these are just conventional uh, speakers, yeah. it's unfair to give it a poo rating because it hasn't got... A pooey one. A pooey rating because it hasn't got a jack input. Yeah. Because you might not be using jack at that right, level. As I said, it could be great for someone, not for other, but right. that's fine. So the LD curve, that bad boy got a total of 19. 19. Which I, I think is very good. Yeah. Out of a possible, what is that, 25? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 then the, uh, the Mark Ergo, that got 21. 21. Whoa. That's 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 up there, and the RCF Evox that also got uh, nineteen. So this right. is close. So this Do you want to show the people at home the scores, Rob? I've just drawn a potato around the twenty-one. That's supposed to be a circle. Well, that is the scores. That's how it ended. That's and that's all she wrote. I think we're gonna. Um, should we go back to the video room and discuss what we've seen here today? I think we should. We'll see you in a sec. Right. So, what did you think? 
It's interesting. Mm. I had only heard um, the L- oh well, I'd only heard the RCF Evox Eight prior to this, so or at least put it through its paces. Yeah. So I was really impressed with the Ergo, and I was massively impressed with the LD Curve. Yeah. That is a big it boy. It is a big big boy. Now yeah. I know from our rating, it didn't come out as number one, but I think if you were playing in a band. Yeah, and absolutely. you wanted something. Yeah, like... I mean, the thing is, if, if you're really going for it, you wanted to go for something which sounds great. Mm. It's a little bit different. Yeah, get a pair of those. Obviously, a pair is isn't cheap, but that is going to go against any large. I think PA depending systems. on the size of the band you're working with, you could actually get away with yeah, one, absolutely. and then have the two top bits. Um, well, yeah, you could, you could split side. off into different sizes. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, and obviously you've got the only downside I found was the XLR input. Yeah, obviously not having jack. But then again, but, you know, the down we did rate that as uh, being a less than perfect score but um, most mixers will have an XLR output unless you're dealing with the really small job yeah that's true so, so can... that was quite good um, the the one that really surprised me though was the mark audio ergo that that thing was killer that was yeah. really good yeah for the size and obviously relatively new coming to that particular market yeah considering they're all base cabs base combos and stuff like that so yeah it's probably one of the better ones we heard today yeah um, I think what was nice was because all three of them have the whole sub and top system that um, it was the one that had the real clarity in the top end without the bass being massively yeah, overbearing. Yeah, it felt more balanced. It was a good balance. Yeah. And those preset EQs, that, yeah. that as yeah, we said that, in the room was... Five or six uh, presets you can flick it to. Which yeah. I know they're not custom ones, but it's enough. So if you find that the music you're playing is a bit more bassy, a bit more trebly, mm. you can just kind of tailor it to that. It certainly made it more versatile than the other two, which I think yeah. was uh, why it came up with the top scores. Definitely. But yeah, so you know, I hope you've enjoyed watching this because mm. um, it's been interesting for it's been us. A pleasure for us. Ah, oh, it's been a delight. <sighs> oh, it's been fantastic. <laughs> Emotional. Um, so anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, I've been Brad. I've been Rob. Let us know what you thought in the comments and everything like that. And hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Andertons YouTube Music Technology channel. If you're a guitar player or you play bass or a drummer or you're into keyboards, you might like one of our other YouTube channels and I'll put links to those in the description below. Anyway, if you'd like to find out more about the products we featured in this video, please click up here. If you'd like to watch another video from this channel, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like the one I'm wearing, click down here. And lastly, if you'd like to subscribe to our Music Tech YouTube channel, please click down here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.